Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today Rob and I are here doing a car tech how-to video on the 2023 Ford Escape, and this is the active trim level. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. The new Escapes uh, dashboard comes in two different configurations. There is this beautiful 12.3 inch fully digital screen and then there's a smaller one that's got um, an 8 inch digital screen and then it's got analog gauges on the far left and right. Um, uh, of course you've got your RPM over on the left, you've got your speedometer on the right as well as digital readout for both of those and you've got uh, information that you can configure in the middle as well as your uh, cruise control and lane centering at the bottom of the screen. Now at the far left you've got your compass which says north, um, you've got your engine temperature gauge, you've got your odometer, you've got um, the auto start stop uh, icon, you've got your lane centering icon, of course your gear selector, how many miles till empty, your fuel gauge, and then the outdoor temperature on the far right. Okay, to control all this, you're going to use the two arrows and the OK button, the back button, and the menu button on the far right side of the steering wheel. So, right now, uh, we are going to go here. This is called My View. Uh, and so, right here, we've got uh, power distribution. And then if you get your uh, media showing up at the, at the top of that screen. Okay, this is called the column screen. Now it's going to change the whole entire screen. Basically strips everything away except for the basics. You got, uh, you know, 72 miles to empty. You got your speedometer and then your cruise control lane centering in the middle. If I go down again, you're going to have trip one and you just press and hold that OK button to reset it. You have got um, average miles per gallon right here. Hold to uh, reset it again. And you've got tire pressure. And then that's the end of that screen. If I go down one more time, I'm back up to power distribution. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the menu button. And this was under my view. Now, if you wanna configure what we just saw, press okay. And these are the things that are currently in it, okay? But we can go to configure my view, press okay. And anything that's got a, that's the, where the square is in blue is gonna show. So let's add trip two. Let's add equal behavior, and now we can't get driver assistance. So it seems that you can get all of them but one, which is too bad. It would be nice to have all of them, but I guess I would rather have driver assistance than equal behavior. All right, I'm going to hit the back button, hit the back button again, hit the back button one more time, and now you're going to see some of those screens that we added. Okay, here's trip two. Uh, let's see, and then where driver assistance was right here, and then power distribution. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, back here. I'm gonna actually press menu. Okay, so that was how to configure what we see under my view. Okay, you can go straight to trip and fuel just by pressing OK. You can see trip one, which we already saw. Hit the back button, trip two fuel economy, and I'm just pressing down on the OK button, eco behavior, and then we're back to trip one. I'm going to press the menu button, go down to status information, I can take a look at power distribution, so it just tells me that my engine's on, and then seatbelt status. So you can see that that one is red right now. So if I take my seatbelt and I actually buckle it, you're going to see it change to a green check mark. And there we go. Let's go to the menu button again. Let's go to vehicle maintenance. We'll press OK. Under tire pressure, you can just that's you can just see the tire pressure, which we have seen in other screens. There is no other screen there, but that's just a way to go straight to it. Okay. Oil life. Here, after you change your oil, you can press here to to reset it. Okay, and I'm gonna go down, because there's more here. Here's where you get into your uh, other things. So we have audio, and you can get into your presets right here. 
scroll down simply select the one you want and then it, that's the where it will go let's talk about sources if I go down under under presets I get AM FM and Sirius XM and that's currently what's hooked up if I had Apple CarPlay or something else a USB uh, those would show up as well Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button navigation so this is where you can actually program a route okay so I can go POI nearby I can go gas stations I can go let's see go to BP obey traffic laws be alert and use voice commands while driving your turn by turn directions are gonna show up um, at the very top where it says main menu that's where your turn by turn will show up and there's actually a place to turn that on or off so if you get this and it's not on you'll see where to do it uh, where to turn it on okay I don't have a phone connected but if it did that's where your phone would be you'd be able to see recent phone calls uh, call history uh, contacts and that kind of stuff and make a call right from there all right uh, I'll press the OK button here under settings this is the last one in the screen and under display setup you can have the speedometer turn to kilometers per hour but yet you notice at the very bottom of the screen there's a digital kilometers per hour and a smaller miles per hour so you still get both okay this is where you you have your turn by turn indication now if you turn that off you're not going to get turn by turn in your dashboard so if you want that you want to leave that off if I go down I got gauge style and right now I'm on classic but I'm gonna go to modern and you're gonna see the little change right here okay I'm gonna go back to classic you notice you still get the digital RPM and the digital miles per hour below the analog uh, the digital analog gauges hit the back button you can turn eco coach on here you can have it visible only when you're in eco mode or even visible when you're in normal mode okay changes the colors a little bit okay I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back again and then I'm gonna go down to vehicle settings there is nothing under here so we're gonna go back I'm gonna go back again I'm gonna go back one more time I'm gonna go to the menu button and that is the bottom of the screen so I'm going to show you one other thing that changes on the um, screen here and that is when you change drive modes now for some reason the only way to access drive modes is to go into the infotainment screen so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to press the home button I'm going to press on the far right you have settings features and apps I'm going to press features and the very first icon is drive modes so you can watch right now we're in normal but watch what happens when I switch to eco so you get a slight color change you got the green leaf at the bottom if I go to sport okay you get this view and if I go to slippery you get this and then the middle changes as well to kind of a, like a slippery snowy surface so um, and you notice the icon in the uh, uh, under the RPM gauge uh, between the actual needle and the digital readout uh, changes as you change modes as well so that is it for the driver's information screen next we're going to move over to the infotainment screen all right the infotainment screen itself comes in two different sizes this is the large size this is 13.2 inches uh, the other size is an 8 inch screen it is sync 4 it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, AM and FM. Uh, it has, of course, Sirius XM as well. This one has built-in connected navigation, uh, and, which is good for three years, and then the connected services part goes away unless you pay a fee. Uh, you still get uh, regular navigation, though. It's, it's still built in. All right, so um, it is a really a nice screen. The way it's set up is these buttons on the bottom are static they are capacitive touch meaning they're just there's not an actual physical button but they've done some graphics with them like right over here around the temperature areas um, it, it they've done it so it looks like it's sticking out just a little bit but basically you have a three-stage heated seats right here now one click will bring it up and you can just raise or lower that and you got the same thing for the passenger on this side okay You've got your temperature control right here. And again, you can click the plus or minus, or you can raise or lower it. 
Okay. Um, if you want, it's dual zone climate control. So if I start adjusting this one separately, then they have two different uh, temperatures. In order to get that to sync back, so you need to press this middle button with a little arrow, and then you can turn off the sync. Now Ford calls it dual, but it, it's the same thing. Now they're both 66. Okay, while we're here, you can change the way the air flows. You can have all three on if you want. You can turn on max AC and you can turn on the recirculatory and you can hit the power button to shut off the climate system altogether. You do have a heated steering wheel button right here. You can control your fan speed from here just by sliding or using the plus or minus. Auto has three little LED lights underneath it. And what they do is they change the speed of the fan. So under auto, you can have sort of a low fan. It's, it's not blowing hard. Click it again. Well, I guess it went, it jumped on me, but there is, um, the fan's running a little bit faster, a little bit slower, that's medium, and then a little slower. And that will stay on auto until you like say go over here and adjust the fan yourself and then auto shuts off. Okay, under here you got max defrost in the front and rear defrost, and of course you can turn AC on or off. So that are all, those are all the buttons there. Up on top, of course, you've got a, a home button and you've got a clock. If you click on the clock, typical to new cars, it takes you right to the clock settings and you can change the time. Okay, over here, it's uh, gonna give you your outdoor temperature, your um, Wi-Fi signal. You got, if data's being, oops, if data's being exchanged uh, and you got the Wi-Fi hooked up, that's gonna show up there. And it shows me that currently the wireless charger in the car is being used. If I take my phone out, that symbol disappears. So it's just telling you there's some a phone on the charger, which is kind of cool. So this right here is your home screen. So a uh, nice split screen, you've got navigation, you've got your media, you've got your phone, and then you've got the basic buttons to get to the things that you need to get to. If you click on any three of these, it's gonna expand into, in fact, any one of these, they're gonna expand into a full screen. Now I'm gonna point this out. This is a, a little side window, and if you swipe it, so we've got media, fuel economy, trip one, and you can switch to trip two, and phone. Those are the four choices you have, but here's the cool thing. Press this uh, four arrow button here, and now you've got a full screen navigation, which is way cool. Okay, let me hit the home button. Okay, um, so we're gonna start with media, and so we're just gonna click on here, and let's see, right now we are in FM. So, how do you tune? How do you save a station? How do you adjust the sound? Okay, so to tune is simple, you can uh, skip to the next station right here, and then it'll stop. You can incrementally tune. You can direct tune by typing in a number. Okay, and then it goes to that station. You want to adjust sound, you're gonna click here, and you can do the tone settings, balance fade, speed compensated volume, and sound mode. And they're all gonna work the same. So I'll go into this one here, and you can use the arrows, or you can slide. I'll just show you these quickly. Speed compensated volume is gonna uh, raise or lower the volume of the uh, your media that's playing based upon the speed of your car. Faster you're going, a little bit louder it gets. It's supposed to balance it out in your ears, but you can adjust it to low, medium, high, or off if you don't like that. And then the sound mode, you get stereo or surround. And you just click on the one that you want. Now, how do you save a preset? Okay, right now you've got two little dashes here, which means we have two screens of presets. If I swipe over, there we go, took a little bit. These are all full. Okay, you'll notice that there's AM, there's FM, and there's Sirius XM. So to overwrite any one of these, you just simply click and hold. 
and now it's 87.9. All right, to go to your sources, you're gonna go here. I'm gonna show you the AM looks exactly the same as FM, works the same way. And then if we go to Sirius XM, you're gonna see a few additional buttons because there's live things, okay? So you can look at live, um, you can pause, um, you can look at related uh, media, you can just tune to uh, the next station right here, brings up this screen, and then you can just scroll and click on the one that you want, okay? Um, and then you can browse by categories. Just click on the one that you want. Okay, let's go back to home. So that's the basics for media. Uh, next, we are going to take a look at navigation. So I just click on this, and this does have connected navigation, which is gonna bring up certain features um, that, you, that you get underneath there. So for instance, if I go here, you notice that weather and traffic on map are grayed out. That's because obviously connected services hasn't been hooked up yet. But when they do, you can get weather and you can get traffic on there, okay? So let's talk about the basics. How do you program a route? Well, to me, the easiest way is just through voice command. And this, of course, has the ability to uh, use voice command just with your voice. You do have a physical voice command button on the left side of your steering wheel, which you can give a quick press and use it, or you can just set it so that it wakes up to a word. So, okay, Ford, find the closest McDonald's. Which item would you like? Six. Here's what I found. You can say set as destination. Set as destination. Starting route to McDonald's. Please proceed to the highlighted road. Okay. There's a couple of things in here I want to point out that I really like because not all new cars do this. You'll notice that I not only programmed the route, but I started the route via voice command. A lot of the new cars, you still have to press on go or start on the screen. This one allows you to do the whole entire thing by voice command. They also give you a beautiful, very simple X to cancel the route. While you're in a route, you can add a stop, okay? You can look at an overview, but here's the volume button right here. You can mute the navigation if you don't wanna hear it talking to you. Okay, this little line over here shows you how close you are to your destination. It will creep up slowly as you get closer. Just gives you a visual. So a couple little tools you can use right then. Now, of course, you can pinch and zoom. Um, you can rotate. And it's very responsive as far as that goes. Okay, I'm going to cancel that route. And let's talk about a few other features uh, in here. For instance, if I go under menu... I can change the map orientation just by clicking. I can um, adjust the voice. If I want voice and tones, like a beep and the voice, voice only or tones only, I can adjust that right there. Things you want to avoid on a route, just click the box. Okay, actually, you can just click on the word too and it does it. Don't want to go in tunnels, it'll, it'll avoid them when it programs are out. These are like one-time settings you make and then you never touch it again, usually. What do you want to see on your map? Okay, save places. Do you want to see uh, gas stations, food? Do you want to see uh, an ATM? Okay, and then um, you can go through here, coffee maybe. Now, if I do that and I go all the way back to navigation and I'm going to zoom out, Let's see, may take a minute here for these to populate. There we go, see? Then those icons start to show up, okay? And if you click on one of them, it brings it up, you can click on it, it'll take you to it, okay? So pretty cool. Um, all right, under more settings, routing and map preferences, okay? Use carpool or HOV lanes when routing. 3D map, dynamic reroute, which means 
it'll give you a choice. You can ask to confirm if a faster route's available and then say, yes, I want to go or no, I don't, or automatically reroute when a faster route is available. Okay, preferred type of route, do you want the most eco-friendly or do you want the fastest? Okay, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is on auto right now. You can turn it to always on or always off if you want. I'd suggest on leaving it off or on auto. If you leave it on always on, everywhere you drive fills with little dots on the screen. So eventually, if you drive in the same area, it's just full of dots. So auto is a little bit better um, or off, one of the two. Or if you're on a particular trip, you say, I want this right now, then you can you know click on it, especially if you're going someplace you're not as familiar about. Now, here it says enable advanced navigation features. That's not going to click on because I haven't hooked up to connected navigation services. When you do, you can click this on and then it's stuff like predictive destinations and if you remember weather and traffic were grayed out, those will now light up and you can use them. Okay, so that's the basics of navigation. We'll go back to the home screen for a minute. And I'm going to go, uh, first of all, to features. I showed you drive modes already. Under driver assistance, you're going to have your safety systems. Traction control on or off, simple click. Cruise control, you do have a choice to have just normal cruise control or adaptive. If you have adaptive, you can also turn on or off lane centering and then predictive speed assist. Now, predict, predictive speed assist will, um, if it senses a corner coming up or something where your car needs to slow down and you have adaptive cruise set, it'll actually slow you down. Uh, under that, you have a tolerance setting you can make where you say, well, you know, un un unless it's a, you know, if it's only a seven mile an hour per difference, you know, I, I don't want it to make any changes. Okay, so you can adjust the tolerance of that a little bit. All right, so let's go back here. Lane keeping. So under mode, you can have alert. So it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna alert you. It's gonna vibrate the wheel. You can have the aid where it actually is gonna steer you or the alert and the aid. Alert intensity, high, normal, low. That's gonna be a personal, um, experience uh, you know as to where you want that set you just have to try them out okay uh, pre-collision assist works the same way okay you can have distance indication turned on uh, and th in that case it shows up in your driver's information screen um, how far you are away from the next car em automatic emergency braking you can turn that on or off I'd leave that on Evasive steering assist, if that's on, it's going to make your, it doesn't actually steer the car. What it does is it makes your steering much more sensitive. So that as you turn, it, I mean, the wheels really go. So it aids you to get out of a jam as much as possible um, at the last moment. Um, alert sensitivity. Okay, you can have that high, normal, or low. Okay. Um, rear view camera delay, if you turn this on, if you go to reverse and then back to drive, your backup camera will stay on for up to about five miles an hour and that will shut off. If you like that feature, you can turn that on. Blind spot information, you can turn that on or off. Park aid system, on or off. Cross traffic alert, on or off. Reverse brake assistant, on or off. And then driver alert, on or off. Those are just simple clicks. Okay. I would definitely uh, suggest leaving the reverse brake assist on. That way, if it says there's something behind you that the vehicle needs to stop for, it'll brake for you. Uh, hopefully, you're paying attention. will brake before that, but it's a nice emergency feature to have. And, of course, there is an owner's manual you can click on um, and go through. Uh, I think just watching our video is easier. All right. I am going to go back to home. And uh, under apps here. Uh, you can find mobile apps. You can go to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto if they're hooked up, and you can get mobile helps, uh, mobile apps help. So um, let's go up to settings. Now we've already been through Sirius XM. We're going to add a phone in a little bit. We've been through sync navigation, sound. Okay, we've seen this before under the media section we covered, and under vehicle. Here's are some settings you can make. You can have a 30 minute max idle. 
anytime. You're sitting in the car in traffic. If you're sitting there idling for more than 30 minutes, it'll shut off, okay? If you turn that off, the car will idle forever as long as you're the one that started it. That's not under remote start. That's a separate function. You can have a rear occupant alert, alert and horn, alert only, off, or child seat installed. This won't work if you have a booster seat installed. It has to actually be a child seat, and then you can tell you've got one installed, and it will alert you to check for it. Right? But that's a nice added feature there. Um, easy entry exit. If you turn that on, uh, what it's going to do is you're going when you get out, turn the car off, it's going to push the seat back as far as it can to make it easy for you to get out. When you get back in and close the door and start the car, it's going to pull the seat forward again. Okay? which is just a really nice feature for getting in and out. Um, remote start setup, okay? Now, under this, you've got it three different settings. You can control the climate. So auto just means, um, and that's what I'd recommend you leave it on, but basically if it senses that the outdoor ambient temperature is very hot or warm, it's going to turn on the air conditioning. If it senses it's very cold, it's going to turn on the heat and the heated seats and probably the heated steering wheel as well. Or you can say, just use my last settings when I shut the car off. But that's often different when you step in the car for the first time during the day. So auto for me is the place that I leave it. Um, seats and steering wheel, auto or off. Same thing. Um, that's for the heated seats and heated steering wheel. And then how long do you want the remote engine to run? Five. 10 or 15 minutes and then it automatically shuts off. Typically on Fords, you can restart them again after that timer runs, but after the second restart, it won't remote start again. So that's where you set that. Power lift gate, you can have it as power or manual and that way the power button won't work. Now power button works. Okay, uh, I'll mention quickly just the lighting. So this has auto high beam. If you uh, so um, when you're driving in traffic, it'll automatically go to your uh, low beam headlights. If it senses oncoming traffic, if it senses it's clear, it'll automatically turn on your brights. It's a nice feature, uh, but you can turn that off if you don't like it. Daytime running lamps, you can leave those on or off. A lot of insurance uh, companies give discounts for having those on, so I would check with your insurance company first. And then auto lamp delays, just, you know, you get out of the car at night and you shut it off. How long do you want the headlights to stay on? Do you want them to go off immediately as soon as you shut the car off and close the door? 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds. Give you some time to get to the door and, and have some light. Okay. So, that was under vehicle. We've already covered clock. Under general, this is where you can change basic things the language. Just click on the one that you want. Temperature, of course Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, measurement units. And you just, again, just click on the one you want. You can change the tire pressure units here. And I'll scroll to the bottom. Here is a reset. So on reset, you can just reset the Ford Pass Connect, or you can do a factory reset if something is not going right. Okay, let's go back here. Under display, you can of course go to a calm screen, which just looks like this. You want it back again, tap the screen, and then you can just hit the home button. Now I'm gonna go to brightness. You can change the brightness. That seems to be as bright as it can get, so it won't go any more which is interesting that they give you that bar, but you can't go any further. Okay, you can also hit reset. And then the mode. Right now it's set at night. You can set it to day, or you can set it to auto. Okay, and that's the difference. It's just very, very white. So I'm gonna go back to night. Okay, let's go back again. All right, here's the software update area. All right, uh, you can set a recurring uh, update schedule if you want. You can get update details. You do have, um, this is where I went and I changed the wake up word. I, I said, okay, and then I used F-O-R-D. I turned that on here. If you don't want the, wor the words to work, okay, Ford, 
apathy. Now it's not listening. You do have a preferred wake-up word. Here are your choices. You don't get to customize one. If you turn advanced mode on, basically what that's going to do is going to give you less prompts, less um, talk back from the car, um, and it, it makes things go quicker. Without advanced mode, it's going to give you more prompts, which is what you want if you're start, you know, just learning how to use the, the voice command. Okay. Um, speaking of that, what can you run with voice command? Well, you can say change the temperature. You can change uh, the, the station or media or volume. Um, so there's quite a few things that you can do. Of course, your, your phone. Uh, but you can look at a phone command list or a voice command list, excuse me. And then you can get voice command help right here. So you've got... Uh, Voice command for mobile apps, climate, media, navigation, Sirius XM, radio, and phone. So lots and lots of stuff. All right, let's show you the camera system because this is really cool. You, you can put it in reverse, but you've actually got a camera button right uh, below the air vents. And if I click that, it's got a front camera. If I click here, I can go, well, um, this is the 360 and the front view. I can go to, I don't want the 360, so it's just kind of giving me, it's still leaving the picture there, but it gives me the front view. Uh, if I want a wider front view, it'll do that. And then if I want a rear, look at the rear view, I can see that. Now, this does have, if I put it into reverse, this does have both static and dynamic swivel guidelines, which I really like. All right, so really, really nice camera system. I love this. If you click on the plus sign, you can now magnify on a particular area of the car, which I think is just really awesome. You can see that we even have uh, swivel guidelines on the, the um, 360 bird's eye view. So that is a really cool feature that you can zoom in on a corner. Of course, if we do there, that just part just disappears. So really, really, really nice camera system. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back into park here. Remember I said earlier that the only place you could change the modes was in the screen. And you you may be looking here going, well, wait a minute, there's a mode button. Yep, and if I press it once, it brings up the screen. And if I press it again, it goes back to the home screen. So you can press this as a shortcut to get to the modes, but you still have to manually click here to change the modes. But at least they gave you a button that you can do that. You also do have a, a physical volume button and a power on and off right there. There's one more thing I want to show you, and that is um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, quickly. Okay, so on my phone, I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to go to Bluetooth, and I'm going to scroll to the bottom of my list. Now, I'm going to go here and click Connect Phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. We're going to see if it shows up on my phone here. Yep, Ford Escape popped up. I'm going to click on it. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Yep says on my phone, do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? You would click allow if this was your car. I'm going to click don't allow because it's not my car. Okay, now hang on. For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so on the phone, it says use CarPlay or not now. If you click not now, it will still connect via Bluetooth, but you don't get Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to click Use CarPlay, and up here, 911 Assist is a nice feature. I, I would recommend leaving that turned on, um, simply because if there's a phone connected to the car and you have an accident, a serious one, your phone is going to call emergency services. And right here, I'm going to click Enable. If you click Disable, you're going to have only Bluetooth. Now I get Apple CarPlay. And which is really cool in, in uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, um, you get a arrow here 
that expands the screen to full screen, which is just way cool. So Apple CarPlay is really awesome. If you haven't used it, I'd suggest spending some time in your driveway playing with this. But basically it takes every app on your phone that will work with the vehicle. Um, and basically that is stuff that is media, uh, audio, uh, or navigation. Okay, so I've got, of course, my phone. And I've got uh, uh, Apple Music. I've got Apple News. I've got a calendar, audiobooks, messages, uh, podcast. I've got um, different um, navigation. I got Google here. I got TuneIn here, Pandora there, Waze over here. Okay, these are your most recently used. Um, uh, apps right here. It shows you the status of your phone charging, your signal, of course, the time. All right, that's the basics of Apple CarPlay. It's an awesome thing, way better than Bluetooth, um, and you have options for navigation. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of here, go to Home, and I am going to go to Apps, and I'm going to go to Android Auto. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. I'm going to turn my phone on. And swipe up. Um, and then I'm going to go under settings. And I'm going to go to connections. Bluetooth. So here comes Ford Escape. I'm going to click on it. It says it's pairing. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your say device. Yes, a pair on my phone. For okay. For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. I'm going to click enable here. Ask me again if I want to allow contacts. I'm going to click deny because that's just mine. Okay, so here's my screen. So I'm going to hit continue. This will happen the first time you hook up. Ask me, it asks again if it wants um, to access to my messages. I said no. And again, if it was you, you'd want to say yes. Okay, now. So over here, we've got, of course, the split screen. We've got this navigation, and then we've got audio right here, or media. If I press the four square button, I'm gonna get all, all, all of my apps, okay? Kinda like I did in Apple CarPlay. And then you get, of course, you get, you know, Google Maps is right here. Now, if I click on that X on the above, see, now I get this full screen, just like I did in Apple CarPlay. It's just that the X is located up there. All right. So that is the basics of uh, Android Auto and how to hook it up and how to get to your apps. These are, of course, your recently used uh, apps down here. All right, that is it for the infotainment screen and the driver screen on the 2023 Ford Escape. And again, this is the active trim level. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.